Hey there, today is Wednesday, August the 3rd. We're in the, the uh, book of Amos. We're starting it today, Amos 1 through 3, and reading Matthew chapter 13. I don't know if you're familiar with Amos and some of the other prophets that we're beginning to read through now, but it's not a particularly happy passage. It's just not. If you skim through and look at the little bold headings all through Amos even, you see things like, like uh, words like judgment, judgment, witnesses, You've not returned to God. Calls to repentance. Woe. Locusts. You, God abhors the pride. All these things. This is not good. This is not good at all. Amos, I joked earlier, uh, I was talking to Keenan Klein, our creative arts minister, just before starting this video here. and I said, Amos, chapters 1 through 3, you all stink. The end. Uh, that's kind of what's going on. The northern kingdoms of God's people, the northern kingdom has just not done good. They've turned away from God. They struggled. It's not God's plan for them. Amos chapter 3, I want to read a verse to you here. A verse that uh, actually is, uh, it speaks volumes to me. I think to you too. Um, actually, I'll read verses 1 and 2. It says, Hear this word, people of Israel, the word the Lord has spoken against you. Against the whole family I brought up out of Egypt. God's reminding them where they came from and how they got there. You were in Egypt. You were a slave. Your ancestors were. It's where you came from. You got here because I rescued you. So God right there masterfully reminds the people of who they are, where they came from, and who he is and how they got there. He's God. He rescued. And then verse 2 says, You only have I chosen. Of all the families of the earth, God has chosen his people, his children. See, this was spoken and then written down, spoken to the Israelites, people that God had chosen when he called Abram, Abraham, to go be the father of all these nations and he, he had all these tribes. He chose these people as his people. He gave them the promised land. He led them to here. These are the people he's been with for so long because he chose them. You do know in the New Testament, later on, after Jesus has come, he's fulfilled all of the Old Testament, all of the law. And then Jesus went to the cross, he died, and was buried and resurrected so we could have life and have hope as well. In the New Testament, it talks about how we're a chosen people, we're a holy nation, we're a priesthood of believers, we're God's children. That's us. We're a chosen people. You are a chosen people. Even your neighbors, your family that don't know Jesus, right? They're not living like Jesus. They're a chosen people. God has chosen them. He chose to send his son to the cross for you and for them. Just not everybody's realized it yet. Verse 2, Amos 3. You only have I chosen. While the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your sins. It's not what I thought was coming. If God chose me, therefore I will reward you. God chose me, therefore I will give you good things. God chose me, therefore I will make life easy. It's not what he says. I chose you, you are mine, therefore I will punish what you do wrong. I will discipline you. Did you know that by following Jesus, you do not guarantee that life will be easy and always comfortable? You don't. By following Jesus, you do not guarantee that you will avoid all the consequences of all your problems. You don't guarantee that everything goes away. When you surrender to Jesus, you don't get a guarantee that all the consequences of your sin from the past are obliterated. Now the sin is, the sin is forgiven, the thing you did is forgotten, is thrown as far as the east is from the west, that happens, but the consequences linger. And they remain. And we have to deal with them. God looks at you and me, just like the people of Israel here. I've chosen you. You're mine. I love you. I redeem you. I made you new. I want to be with you. My spirit is in you. But when you sin, I will discipline you. Why does God discipline the people he's chosen? It's because loving parents discipline their children so the children will mature. And God does the same for you and for me. I don't know what 
has been your past. I don't know what thing you've done. I don't know what has happened. But I do know that God will discipline the sin. And we're told in the New Testament, we should consider it pure joy because discipline brings uh, suffering and perseverance and we grow in maturity. So whatever you've done, today I invite you, challenge you to, to change the way you think, to repent about it, to confess it, and do the discipline, come out mature, and lead others to the Father that has chosen them as well. Until I see you again, you are sent.